Hi, everybody. I'm here with Jeremy Lyons, who's a regular on this show. And we're flipping the script this time. Jeremy's going to be interviewing me about some stuff. Jeremy, over to you. Thank you so much. And as I, it, I love being a regular on this. I, I wish that people could sometimes hear the back and forth before the calls. So getting into it. All right. We're obviously very excited about poetry, very excited about what it's going to do and how it's going to help teams in 2024. I think one of the things that people are always talking about is, is things that tools can help people do. And what skills do you, let's take this the other direction and ask, what skills do you think we can't enable? Like, and how should we overcome that aspect of things? Wow. Okay. So when we, when we created poetry, we looked at the, we had access to the 72 recruitment processes for BT, British Telecommunications, from about five years ago. And we took a look at that and we worked out, are there different processes today that were not valid five years ago? You know, and we kind of brought it up to date. And then we looked at what are the things that humans have to do uh, because technology doesn't really do it for them and can't really do it for them as far as we understand. And then we also looked at which are the things that are about candidate management, because that's the one area we're just not getting into at all. We're not doing anything to do with like assessing candidates, moving candidates through a process, managing candidate profiles, uh, you know, marketing, anything, anything to do with uh, managing a recruitment process or managing a, a talent pipeline. It's not not that. And that left us with around 30 um, of those seven two areas where we thought there's probably a workflow for that that's not really being covered anywhere else or we think could be covered better or we think by consolidating um, all of these solutions into the one area that's going to provide a better experience for recruiters um, I mean the, the 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 one thing that I don't think poetry or any type of recruiter enablement rec ops or, or any type of tech can do is generate the type of empathy that you need to be able to generate when you're talking to a human in person, whether it's in the flesh or whether it's like on teams like we're doing just now. Hum recruiters are not really hired for their skills in marketing or their skills in administration or their skills in, they're, they're hired for normally for their ability to achieve influence with the hiring manager and with the candidates and make that match come together in a way where, you know, it, 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 um, it it's, it's really elegant. And I think that that's vital in the executive search area. And I think that that's really vital in the like in demand talent area. So things like, software developers and healthcare specialists and, and those types of areas. But I also believe there's a lot of parts of recruitment where a recruiter is not needed to interview candidates and to influence candidates. And that would extend to everything volume. It would extend to maybe the early careers type space. Although for like hiring from university and things like that, I think individuals there probably do need to talk to humans, but I think the humans they need to talk to is the hiring manager. Um, I remember asking recruiters a few years ago, All right, what um, do you believe that candidates want to talk to recruiters? And they all said, yes. I then asked a bunch of, bunch of like non-recruiters, do you want to talk to recruiters? And they normally said no. So, you know, there's a disconnect in terms of what we think our value to the process is. And what it re and what it really is for the candidates. So, but but certainly in the exec search area and in the in demand talent area where talent sourcing and going and really like uh, you know getting somebody's attention when they're just not interested, that type of thing that talent sources have got a lot, got a lot of skills in. That kind of area is one where 
I mean, you can enable people with with scripts and with objection handling messages, and you can enable processes and how to follow up and what to do if they're ghosting you and that type of thing. So I know I've just rambled there for quite a long time, but <laughs> well, what no, about I mean, you? You, you, you touch on a couple of things. And I think that it's, when I think about uh, sometimes the skills that are needed to do a, a really solid rec ops jobs, it's the it job, it's has nothing to do with the technical skills and everything to do with the soft skills. Because the, the rec ops space, you, you have to go in so many different directions. And as a former teacher, you have to go in so many different directions because you kind of don't know what the energy you're going to get out of your classroom is. It could be the same topic you taught that morning and now that afternoon people are just, they're, they're not having it. And I think you, you touched on something in there that I thought was kind of interesting, which is uh, kind of the mentioning of the technical skills from a sourcing perspective versus the soft skills from a sourcing perspective and how you can write these scripts, you can write these objective or these uh, objection handling pieces. Um, and there have been many books on those on those topics. Would you say that sometimes it's almost easier to find the hard technical skill because you know what you're looking for? You're, you're going and going, you know, I'm looking for five years of Python or, or 10 years of uh, Kotlin or whatever it is, it's actually sometimes a lot harder to find those soft skills that you're actually looking for that match the technical skills. Yeah, I do. I do. I think that, um, I mean, if it, the thing about soft, the thing about assessing people for soft skills is there's, there, there's the, there's the risk of applying a lot of bias into that, you know, because like, it's not it's not a, it's not a scientific thing like if well it probably is a scientific thing but we're not scientific enough typically as recruiters to be able to assess you know somebody's communication skills if they are to my liking they might not be to your liking or vice versa you know we've all got a slightly different so i think that i think that certainly assessing the skills of a recruiter is easier it's easier to understand if somebody's able to put a Boolean string together or they're able to, you know, find some candidates or put together a good job advert or that type of thing. Um, but certainly the the thing that, what can you not enable? That was your original question. What can you not enable? You, you, it's very difficult to enable an agility of mind that you can cover things that come out of left field, which they do in recruitment all the time from the candidates. The candidate suddenly says, look, my husband's decided he doesn't want to move uh, to, you know, to, to that location. Well, how do you handle that? The hiring manager said at the last minute, here's another candidate I'd like you to consider like two minutes before the job offer is about to go out. How do you handle that? I think there's so many different things that we, that we do need to deal with and we need to deal them in real, deal with them in real time. Like when we're talking to somebody face to face, that that's something that is very difficult to to enable candidates with. Uh, sorry, recruiters with. Yeah, no. And we were talking about this during their pre-call. We were talking about bias and AI and, and kind of how is it going to subtly introduce things? I mean, how are you sort of as you're building a tool that has some AI backbone and has something, how are you seeing maybe bias that's being introduced, no matter how you, you sort of are teaching the model to not introduce any sort of level of bias? Yeah, this is a really great question as well. I mean, I, again, there is no silver bullet on this, I don't believe. Um, we we use, we have one preferred large language model um, that, that we use. And uh, although our our customers can switch it over to a different one if that's what they prefer. Um, so there's two options. The I think they both, I think they all at this point have the capability to to embed bias for sure. So if you ask, if you ask Dali, for example, to put together a picture of um, a happy software engineer, it's probably going to give you a man. Um, and so 
we've done quite a few things to try and counter that. So we've got we put a lot of prompt um like engineering work into manda mandatory mandatory AI prompts which go in. So if somebody's like doing a job advert, for example, they might say this, I want a job advert for and they'll just select it's a software developer based in California, um, working full time on site, and they'll add in some notes and then it'll develop the job advert. But what's behind that is probably about 20 sentences that go into the large language model to return back um, what they're looking for and things like do not use um you know do not use gender coded language uh you know things like that they, they'll go into that prompt and that's that's the sort of thing that a recruiter typically won't do if they're just using chat gpt like raw to to perform that but the one that you and i were talking about earlier was certainly around 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 images and yeah we should certainly we should certainly create a mode which is on automatically which is like an anti bias mode which is maybe three out of four images that are generated, if they can include humans, make the humans female, uh, make the humans uh, other ethnicities apart from white, you know, things like that, so that we're not just like really uh, magnifying the challenge that AI um, can bring uh, upon diversity. Yeah. Well, and I think, and this will be the last question because I know we're, we're coming up on time. One of the things you talked about there is, you know, how you have an enablement platform. You want people to get better. Obviously, it's the the, the goal is to make sure that people are, are learning while they're doing so that you can enable people. Do you see a space where maybe um, poetry actually, you know, person writes a Boolean search string comes in and suggests instead of just does. So if using your example there, it's like, okay, you're looking in California, but maybe you should be more specific and say Los Angeles, because that's, that's going to get you a different kind of result, kind of thinking into the fact that large language models and this generative AI, and, and generative AI, especially around English being a precision language, mm -hmm. if you use very specific words, you're going to get very specific outcomes because of what that word means. Do you kind of see poetry enabling people to actually learn more about sort of, hey, you picked this, but this is also sort of some options that you could use to learn from? Uh, it's such a wonderful idea. And the answer is yes. So we are already, um, by the end of January, we will already have certain recommendation features. For example, if somebody, either a job advert, then um, there will be a message which says, uh, do you want a Boolean string for these types of people? Do you want social media outreach messaging for these types of people? They'll click yes, and, it, and, and it'll just generate that straight away. So you, they don't need to go and brief in the, the new, you know, another solution to get that. That's an example of that. Um, we've also, um, just yesterday, actually, um, third of to, to time stamp this third of January, we um, released a research uh, solution. That research solution is really what anybody, anybody, anybody with a great understanding of how to use something like Bard can go and do that themselves. But what we've done is we've we've put a lot of templates in. So I want to learn about companies. I want to learn about industries. I want to learn about um, like jobs. Right. And then there's template questions in there. And so, for example, um, you fill in three form, three fields in a form effectively. And what you're going to get back is a list of here's 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 in order the top universities in California for biostatisticians with additional information about them and in a format that you're going to going to want. So certainly when somebody creates a, yeah, like a, a, a job advert or something 
for I'm looking for biostatisticians, the location's Colorado, then we will have the ability to be able to automatically serve up. Hey, we see that you've suggested, you know, you're looking for this in Colorado. Did you know that there's more, more biostatisticians in Nashville, Tennessee than there is anywhere else in the US? And might that be another location? That could be another location you might you might want to take a look at, you know, things like that. Such yeah. a great idea. I think that type of thing's probably about four months off. So in the world we live in, you know, with a small company, really nimble, uh, we move very fast. And uh, yeah, for a larger organization, that could be like a year away from them offering that type of thing. But uh, br brilliant suggestion. By the way, anybody listening to this, I didn't prompt Jeremy with any of these questions. <laughs> He's not just just like uh, being a, uh, put up here to ask me questions for good answers. You know, it's uh, I've I think if people ask me what my superpower is, I might say just asking the hard questions and being okay with that. Uh, but I always I have always appreciated the fact that certain people are more game to answer them in in different kinds of ways than other people are, and so. It's uh, it's nice to kind of turn the tables a little bit and and get your opinion and your your insights on these. Yeah, brilliant, Jeremy. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for your questions. Great to see you again. Catch up with you soon. Definitely. Talk to you later, Adam.